Welcome. Um, so today we'll be uh, talking about uh, the art of Firebase. Well, it will be presented by Mr. Lim Xiang Yi. So first of all, welcome. Hope everyone's doing all right and keeping well during this time. So I'm Alia. I'm from the SC University Technology Petronas. So for those who haven't heard of the SC or who are new here, so basically the SC are uh, university-based community groups for students interested in Google developer technologies and who would want to explore new technologies all around. So we welcome students from everywhere around the world and from various backgrounds and various majors. So you don't even have to be in IT or our profession in programming to join the SC. So for the SC, Basically, we give opportunity for students to uh, explore latest technologies and to gain skills through workshops, uh, trainings, and also get the opportunity to network with people all around the world to solve local problems. So before we start, I want to show a, a video of introduction of what is DSE. Developer Student Clubs train thousands of student developers globally and work with their communities to solve real-life problems. Google selects amazing students from across the globe once a year to be a Developer Student Club lead and start a club on their campus. These leads believe knowledge is power and that technology can do extraordinary things for the world. They take on the responsibility to help students learn and empower these students to solve real problems around them. Join us in building a global community for students. Um, 
Um, so hopefully that video makes you guys want to join the SC. And now uh, we would like to start on uh, the art of Firebase uh, by Mr. Lim Shang Yi. So I would like to invite Mr. Lim Shang Yi here. So yeah, this is Mr. Lim Shang Yi. And um, before that, I would like to give a background about what he is and what he does. So he is a senior software engineer at Hubble and he is a Google developer expert on Firebase. He mainly uh, works with Java, Angular, HTML5, and also he was a community uh, lead for Google Developer uh, Groups Kuala Lumpur last year. And apart from that, he also likes to uh, try baking and cooking when he needs a change of scenery. So now I'll pass the floor to Mr. Lim to um, talk about his um, presentation on the art of Firebase. Because um, to start, we will, uh, for this talk, we want to discuss about, um, basically introduce what is Firebase and uh, how can we use Firebase in our daily life. So that's what we'll be, uh, Mr. Lim will be explaining. So I'll, explain, I'll pass it to Mr. Lim. Hi, everyone. I'm Shang Yi, a Google developer expert in Firebase. So also a software developer as well. So uh, what I do most of the time on my day-to-day -day job is to write uh, mobile apps actually for Hubble. And occasionally I do write articles on Firebase or product, uh, provide POCs for Firebase related solutions. So let's get started. So uh, I'm sure most of you are developers. So as a developer, you build apps, right? I mean, that's kind of obvious. So one of the first few things when we decide to build an app is that we kind of feel that maybe app development may be easy, right? So let's take, for example, this simple to-do list. Right? Let's say you are a developer and you want to build a to-do list. And basically, it's just adding new tasks and mark them as completed or remove them. So in your mind as a developer, you would think that it's basically really easy to do it, right? You would probably just make sure you have a database and just write insert statements to the database and the UI, right? So your general impression of writing most apps nowadays should, should tend to be actually easy and straightforward. And as developers, we tend to rush into coding to get our solution out as fast as possible. But unfortunately, the reality is that this is what you actually need before we actually build an app. So of course, you would need uh, your user interface. And if you're building uh, apps for multiple people and you're gonna host it online for uh, multiple users to use, you will need some sort of API to connect to your UI. It can be a mobile app, it can be a web app, etc. You will need a server to host your API and your database as well to make sure everything can run and can scale accordingly. And of course, you will need somewhere to host it if you're building a website. So now all of these compartments, all of these architectural decisions has to be made before jumping into building your app, right? So it's not as straightforward as just thinking from this point of view of what we're going to put in our UI, what kind, what sort of font you want to use, how do we handle uh, the add button and stuff like that. There's a lot more things that behind the scenes that you would need to handle as a developer, right? So it tends to get complicated at the end of the day and you might be overwhelmed with all the stuff that you need to do before you actually get your product up to share with other users as well. So even to create a minimum viable product, right, or even a simple proof of concept may or may not require you to think of all the other complexities behind the scenes before you actually build your product. So most of the time we would tend to feel overwhelmed and how as a developer we can actually get this out of the way before we actually build meaningful apps, right? You want to build, uh, you want to think about all the features that the users can have access to. We uh, want to think of all of those uh, decisions to bring, to make your app usable uh, to the users. But then at the same time, we will need to consider all of these complexities that goes behind the scene to make sure it works. 
So this is where Firebase comes in. So Firebase here helps mobile and web developers or teams to succeed. So let's take a look what uh, this actually means. So Firebase itself contains uh, three uh, segmented uh, areas of products and technologies for you to have access to. As developers, I want to build better apps uh, for our users and you can use all of these features to help you with that. Besides uh, writing features and building stuff, we also want to improve our app quality. So how can we improve our app quality with Firebase? There are a few tools available for you to help you with that. For example, measuring how you handle crashes, your performance on the web, et cetera. And of course, Firebase also wants to help you grow your user base who uses your app or your website by providing with you with tools in order to help you predict uh, and analyze data on users' uh, engagement on your app in order for you to make decisions on whether you, uh, where you should grow your product or make changes. So for today's session, we're gonna just talk about building better apps, right? As developers, that's where we are closer to home. And uh, you can, of course, uh, take a look at extended reading on how to improve your app quality and grow your users. So Firebase itself supports uh, multiple ver uh, various languages. So the most common ones are iOS, Android, and web. So if you need to work on game, if you're a game developer, you can work on Unity. If you're an embedded devices developer or a C++ developer, you can, of course, use it on C++ as well. So let's take a look. Uh, today's focus would be more on the web area because that's most easily accessible to anyone and easily learnable. So let's take a look at how you can build apps faster and easier, All right? So these are some of the features that uh, Firebase has that you can leverage on. We will go through some of them uh, in a moment and just, just go through a brief uh, overview of what these items do. So we have a Cloud Firestore, uh, real-time database. Both of them are meant for storing data on your uh, application itself. We have cloud functions that help you run business logic or some sort of secure code that you should not be exposed to the end users. We have authentication, hosting, and cloud storage as well, which we will go through later on. So let's talk about Firebase authentication, right? So most of the time when you build apps, we need to secure an app against an authorized use, right? So most apps you see will have some way of preventing uh, these users from trying to enter your system. So usually it is a form of a login uh, mechanism, right? So let's say you are a developer and you need a way to uh, identify between public users and uh, users who actually are authorized to perform actions on your app. So Firebase authentication is one way you can actually do it. So it is provided uh, as an uh, identity as a service. So that means uh, we can actually uh, provide you with different source of identity uh, verification if you need it. For example, if I want to sign you with Google or Facebook, or if I want to just sign you with regular email and password, or you want to do phone num number verification as well, can be done on the Firebase authentication. Now, in some areas, uh, Firebase, uh, uh, in some systems, authentication might already be developed. Say, let's say you're already working on an existing system that already has certificate security done, but you want to use Firebase features as well. So you, Firebase authentication actually supports custom authentication to help you with that as well. So let's take a look at some areas in that. So uh, as a user or as a developer, we are concerned about security, right? We want to make sure our users are able to log in securely in your app, able to perform transactions or perform uh, manipulations to your data securely. And of course, we tend to be afraid of uh, getting our username and passwords leaked, right? So that's a major uh, flaw in systems where we want to be able to log in users by username and password, but then you should not be storing your password on your database. So how do we handle all this? Do we hash our, our, uh, our keys and what sort of hashing do we want to use? And how do we want to handle all of this uh, security area to prevent any uh, sort of uh, vulnerability. So this is where Firebase authentication shines because this is built uh, by Google 
and of course it integrates with third-party uh, authentication services that means as a developer you don't actually need to handle all the uh, complexity behind the scenes of how do you compare your usernames and passwords where do you store your passwords how do you make sure they are secure how to make sure they are not breachable and all of these areas so all of this uh, complexity is taken care of for you by Firebase itself. So let's go through the next product that Firebase has to offer. So the Firebase real-time database. So let's say you have like the to-do app that we mentioned earlier on, and you want to be able to share this to-do list with your friends or with other users as well. Of course, that would mean we would need a database, a central location where the data would be so that everyone has access to. So most of the time when you develop a database, you would choose maybe a SQL SQL database somewhere and you will need to host it on a server. And then you need to host it somewhere, the server that is accessible on the internet so that everyone is able to use it, right? So all of this complexity as a developer can uh, set you back in uh, concentrating on developing your features. So Firebase has an offering called the Firebase Real-Time Database that allows you to store data in it and can fetch the data remotely as well. So all the data is stored in a JSON format and it also provides real-time updates. So any updates done immediately on the database is reflected immediately on the app without you needing to refresh or reload the app. So of course, you also have offline handling as well. What does this mean if your app goes offline or the computer has no internet connection? What happens then when you try to insert the data? Does it fail? Uh, and how do we actually sync that data back, back, all the data back to the server? So all of this is done automatically by you by a real-time database. So you don't need to worry about what happens if there is a flaky connection or there's no connection and the person is trying to insert data. Does that mean the data is lost and stuff? And all of this is actually handled for you by real-time database and synced automatically when the internet is back up or when there's a connection available. And of course, it supports persistence. What does that mean is that uh, you don't actually have to keep getting the data from the server to actually see the values. So values when uh, returned from the database to your app is kept locally until there is a new data received. So all of this is supported by the real-time database. Now with that in mind, let's take a look at a simple demo to show you how this works. All right, so let me just show you this. Page. So I want all of you to actually go to this link and let's play a fun game. So let's just see. So this is just the console of the database. So Are you able to see this at the moment? So again, just go to this link. And once you're in that link, just enter a name, for example. And then you just choose one option. Either you can choose to be a fire or water, you just choose. And then let's play this game together. So. Uh, if all of you just go head over the link, fit in your username, and you should be able to see the screen. Let me just go back here.
So let's just give a few more minutes. Just visit this link. Right, we have so far only me and someone else. So maybe have a few more. So just click, just go to this link. So this will be a collaborative demo. So just go to the website and just enter your username and just choose either side. So, uh, I guess let's wait a few more minutes. So let's wait a few more times. We only have three users. So while waiting for users to join this link, so let me just briefly walk through you what's happening at the moment. So this is the real-time database right now. I'm in the Firebase console. And every time you actually enter your username and choose a site, I will actually create an entry here so I can keep track who is inside the list. So, so far there's only four people in the list. Five, awesome, I guess that's almost maximum number. So let's play a game right now. So this is uh, this website is actually running on the real-time database. So this website is directly connected to this, this database. So this is a game, right, where who can actually spam the deploy button the fastest and see who wins. So let me just start the game up. So, what you can do right now is to click on the button. So do we have any fire? So it looks like the water is winning. The fire needs to uh, really uh, pick up the pace. So while uh, uh, these two parties are fighting between the fire and water, right? So what happens here is uh, every time you click on the deploy button, we actually increase the counter by one. So what happens here is that every time you update the database, it is immediately reflected on the web page without you needing refreshing. So everything here is real time. So this is what we call as real time database, right? So I guess everyone's tired already. So let's just deploy a few more. So uh, this thing can uh, actually connect to a lot of different users as well. So let's say you want to build a chatting app or you want to build anything that utilizes the real-time functionality, you can do so. So I'm just going to, you can try again and I'm going to close the, the game now. So here you can see, right? So what I've done is also listed out the top five contributors here. So we have Amiru at 250 clicks. So I guess the entire fire might belong to him, I'm not sure. So we can actually do this sort of apps, right? You can actually write collaborative apps that basically allows multiple people to be connected together and perform a specific action uh, in, and you can get all the results immediately. So this is how the Firebase uh, real-time database works. So if you have any sort of app you want to build that requires this sort of uh, functionality where the app responds very fast to user updates, this, is my, this can be a consideration for you. So let's take a look at some of the, uh, how the database looks like, right? So we have a site count that always increases by one on the server side. So uh, this is atomically increased every time you click on the button. So this is handled by the server. So what happens is there's a transaction running on the background that makes sure that all the accounts are counted properly. So you won't have any issues where two people click on the same button twice 
and it only increases once. So these are all the users that we have created. Every time you created uh, the username and password, right? So, and this is where we actually keep track of how many uh, accounts that a user has clicked. So this random key here is actually your username, your user ID. And all of this is done automatically for you on the authentication. So in this app, I'm actually using anonymous authentication. That means I do not need you to sign up as a user, but I want to keep track of your session as a user. So all of these users are created on uh, using Firebase authentication. So let's proceed on with the next demo. Uh, next slide. So let's talk about Cloud Firestore. So Firestore itself is also a different way of actually uh, saving data, right? So we have seen the real-time database functionality where you can save data as well. But Firebase also has some uh, another way of, for you to save data on the database. So in this case, the Cloud Firestore also does real-time synchronization as well, like the real uh, like the real-time database. Uh, but this is much slower and it is used mainly to make sure your data is more organized. So if you don't fancy the look of the uh, JSON structure of your database, so let me just go back here and take a look here. If you notice, all the data here is in a JSON tree, so there's no concepts of tables and records and rows. Uh, so if you don't really like the way data is structured in a uh, real-time database, which is essentially a very big JSON tree, you can take a look at the Cloud Firestore itself. All right. So the Cloud Firestore itself uh, is a NoSQL database. So everything is uh, stored in collections and document structure. And of course, offers the same features of handling offline and auto-scaling features. So, so let's say you want to build a chatting app, right? So just now earlier on, you saw how you can actually use the real-time database in order to build apps such as a chatting app. You can actually also do it on the Firestore itself. So let's take a look of another demo, and this time it's called Emoji Chat. So just visit the Emoji Chat link. And what does this page actually does is that allows you to chat in emoji. So you type in text and what happens is there is a cloud function at the background that actually helps you translate uh, text into emojis just for the fun of it. So let's say for example, hello world and press send you will see the plain text at the same time at the background a clock function will run to translate all of this into emoji So this is how you can actually use Firebase to actually build your apps, right? Uh, this is running on the cloud, uh, this is running on real-time database, but you can have it done on the uh, Cloud Firestore as well. So it's actually really simple to build apps like this. All you need to do is just to connect to the database and that's pretty much it, right? All the syncing of all the real-time updates all done for you by Firebase itself. So it's pretty much cool, right? So besides just doing emojis, you can do all sorts of things. You can even do translation at the background on the cloud functions to help you translate text and all uh, send emails if you need to. So uh, this is a lot of different uh, things that you can think of using Firebase. So now, even with this app, I have not de deployed any sort of server. I don't have a server. I don't have an API. I don't have a database background that's running at, the, uh, at all. So all of this is handled for you on Firebase itself. And what's really cool is that it's actually scaled. So I can theoretically, if you have a lot of viewers, right, we can even have uh, hundreds, tens of hundreds and thousands of users actually using this app at a single time. So 
This is one of the few features that Firebase has to offer if you need to build this large scalable app. So as developers, when we finish building apps, we tend to lose focus on how to make sure our apps doesn't crash on large scale systems. So let's say you have an e-commerce website that has a flash sale and everyone's tries to enter, right? Firebase actually helps you handle all this load for you easily. So uh, this is one way you can take a look at how Firebase helps solve your problem. Okay, enough chatting. Let's go back to to the presentation. So this is one example that you can use. So let's take a look a bit of a code. Let's go to a bit of the technical side a bit. So how do you actually build a chatting app, right? It's very simple. If you're familiar with uh, HTML, this should look uh, very familiar to you. So basically what we have is that we're just having uh, a few elements here. For example, I want to show my message, right? So earlier on, you saw the chatting text box, right? So this is basically that text box itself. We get the value of what you entered. And how do we actually save it to the database? So traditionally, if you use a SQL database, you most likely need to write statements, uh, SQL statements, right? You need to write something along the line of insert into message, message yes? Uh, and you set the values of the name and the message and blah, blah, blah. And then, and that's it. So in, real, uh, in Firestore, all you need to do is just import the library that you need to use and just use the database.collection.chats. I want to add a new message to the chats collection, which is basically like a table. So you can uh, kind of uh, think of it that the collection is like a table and a mess and, a, and the document is like a row in the table itself. So basically what we're doing is that, uh, please add name and messages to the chats itself. And how do we actually read data in real time, right? So all you need to do is to use, get the collection by going back to the chats collection and use the on snapshot listener. So this method, this callback function actually runs every time there's a new message being added on the back uh, backend. So every time a person enters a new chat, this automatically runs and you can actually check the type whether it has been added. If the change, if the, if the document has been added, all you need to do is get that document details and just push it on the HTML page itself. So it's pretty much simple. So besides doing, so now we have learned how to manipulate data, right? Now let's take a look at some areas that you most likely will need to use. For example, I want to create an app that actually allows people to upload photos, right? Or upload any sort of attachment in general. So how do we do it outside of Firebase? You will probably need to, of course, have your server. You will need to have an API. You will need to have a location in the server to actually store the files. And you will need a way to actually retrieve the files up back for you. So all of this uh, can be easily uh, simplified for you with cloud uh, storage. So cloud storage helps you serve uh, media content or anything that you want to upload basically. And of course, it, scales automatically if a thousand users are trying to add new documents or add new pictures it makes sure that they are able to do so easily without any connection issues and of course all of this data uh, are served on global edge caches so that users at different locations can easily access these contents uh, besides uh, easily from different locations so it can be from somewhere from end of the world towards somewhere near malaysia as well they're able to uh, get this data at a very uh, optimized way. So let's say, for example, you want to build an app that allows you to upload your files, pictures, and share them with your users. So let's say you want to build an app that shares pictures, for example, like Instagram, right? So you can actually use Firebase Storage to help you with that in conjunction with Cloud's Firestore as your database. Or you can use real-time database as your database as well to store this information, but your files will be stored in the Cloud uh, storage so in the event let's say you are trying to upload a file and there's an intermittent connection or the connection is really bad right say for example when you're traveling and there's low internet connection what happens to your file uploads so the first base sdk for cloud storage helps you achieve uh, this it helps you resume uh, your upload when the data 
connection is not very good and it helps you handle what happens if there's no connection as well. It pauses the download and resumes, uh, pauses the upload and resumes it uh, automatically. So all of this is done for you by the SDK for you. So let's take a look at the very simple code example of how do we actually store files to the Firebase storage. So suppose you have an attachment that you click on a file upload button, you click on, and technically you would get your file here. You can easily upload your file by just putting this code and you basically has a, you have already uploaded your file. It's pretty much as simple as that. So uh, in this case, there are a few ways you can actually insert your file. If you want to insert your file as from the blog or for the file API on the web, you can do that. If you want to store files in a base64 URL in a data format, you can actually do that as well. And if you want to download files, right? After you upload it, you surely want to show a page where you show all the files that you've uh, uploaded, right? For example, let's say I have uploaded an image called stars.jpg. I want to be able to download and show it on the UI. So you can actually use the SDK. So the stars reference here belongs to the uh, files, the cloud storage uh, SDK. You can actually access it and get download URL to actually get a remote link for the users to see. So enough talk, let's take a look at a very simple gallery demonstration and how you can actually do it. So just go to the link. If you are on Facebook Live, the link should be available on the chat. Otherwise, you can probably just type it yourself. So let's just go to this link. So this is a very simple app that basically shows all the pictures that you have uploaded. So for sake of simplicity, right, all we did was uh, access your webcam and take a photo. So if you're shy, you can probably cover up your webcam, but uh, let's just see who's in. So I can say smile, cheese. Okay, it's a bit distorted, but never mind. Upload. So here is what happens. So when we take a photo and click on the capture, I'm actually taking this image and uploading it to the uh, cloud storage. So if I were to go to my cloud storage uh, project, and we look at our storage, we actually can see all the files that is uploaded. So just now when I, uh, and when I just put in a picture, when I uploaded a picture, you will see the picture appearing here as well. Going back to the demo. Sorry for the distortion, not very, it was a, quite of a rush project, but Basically, you can upload as many pictures as you want. So this upload actually upload to the gallery demonstration. So you actually do see it here. So new files are actually uploaded automatically once you have written the code, of course, and all the files will appear here. And how do we actually get it to show on the UI, right? So of course, this UI work is actually done using Cloud uh, Firestore. So let's take a look how Cloud Firestore looks like for this. So when I click on a database, I can switch between real-time database and, oops, I can switch between real-time database and Cloud Firestore. So in a single project, you can actually have access to two different uh, databases at once. So in Cloud Firestore, I have a collection called Photos, which is basically a table, and all of these are your rows. So in each row, I've added two fields. One is your URL, one is my storage reference. So here you will see the, uh, the URL path of the images being uploaded. So every time you actually click on the upload button, I will create an entry in the storage or upload it to the Firebase uh, Cloud Storage. And then I will create an entry in the database so that we can keep track of what has been inserted into the database. So most of the time when you write, uh, when you want to handle file storage, we tend to not uh, write the file directly into the database because that will increase the size of the database exponentially. So what we do is that we keep a reference to the actual file 
here and we're able to get access to the files automatically. So thanks everyone for joining uh, and sharing your pictures. Don't worry, I will delete them later on. And just to be safe, uh, these are actually safeguarded. So in case uh, you're afraid that your data get leaks out from the storage itself, in this case, let's take a look at the uh, file storage itself. Uh, Firebase has security rules to prevent and authorize access to your storage bucket, right? So in this rule, I'm actually checking to make sure that all users must be authenticated before actually able to write or read your data. So that way you're preventing an authorized use outside of the Firebase or outside of the web to be able to download all of your data from you. So this is an example of what you can use Firebase for. It doesn't have to be exactly this. You can, of course, create an app to upload maybe some photos or your profile picture uh, some in or Instagram uh, apps if you want and stuff like that. It's pretty much uh, up to your creativity. So let's continue on with the demonstration. I mean, the slide. So the next one I want to talk to you about is cloud functions. So in most times when you develop an app, right, you have your UI, right, you have your client-side logic, but there are certain times where these logics cannot be exposed to the user, right? For example, let's say I want to build an app that does some sort of calculation, or let's say you build an e-commerce app, right? You add, let's say you add five items to your basket, right, to your cart, and you want to check them out. All of the prices, the tax sales, all the calculations should be done on the back end in a secure location so that no one can actually tamper or make changes to that. And this is where cloud functions come in. So help you deploy a set of code, JavaScript, inside Firebase, uh, inside the Google Cloud environment, which is the cloud we are talking about. So by the way, Firebase actually runs on the Google Cloud platform. So if you're wondering what's the difference between Firebase and Google Cloud, uh, basically Firebase lives inside the Google Cloud environment. So you can access all Firebase features from Google Cloud Console as well. So Cloud Functions uh, allow you to write code that can be triggered um, in a various way. So if you want to write, let's say, an API uh, function and you need to expose this API to other users, you can actually write it on the Cloud Functions. And the one of the sweetest things is that you don't actually need to manage your servers. There's no uh, place for you to deploy your servers, no place for you to handle your code environment your code framework, manage all of the runtimes, everything can be done automatically for you using Cloud Functions. All you need to do is just write the code that you're interested in doing, and that's it. So Cloud, First Store, uh, Cloud Function itself not uh, supports other uh, triggers as well. So not just HTTP functions, we also can write uh, Cloud Functions that run on triggers. So let's say you are using the Firebase authentication and you want to run some sort of back-end code let's say, for example, to send an email when the user has successfully signed up, or you want to send uh, some sort of invoice when we created a new uh, order on the Fire, Fire Store, or if we have an analytics that you want to analyze, all of this can be triggered by the Cloud Functions for you. So Cloud Function also automatically scales. So if you have 20,000 users trying to perform an order, sign add to cart and check out the order, all of this is automatically scaled according to load. So it will actually spawn a lot of different functions to help you uh, run it uh, all the time. And then it will turn itself off when there are no users using. So it's pretty much cost saving in a way that your functions don't keep running on the cloud even though there are no customers. So let's take a look at some case studies of how you can do it using cloud functions. One of them is to send an email. So most of the time when you have an app application, you might want to send an email when the user has signed up. You can, of course, use cloud functions to do it. And let's say you want to make some background process changes. For example, like the emoji chat you have saw just now, you enter some sort of text and the background, the cloud function will help you translate all of this into emoji uh, and show it to the user. So sometimes you might be wondering, why do we need to process data in the background? It is tend to, if imagine, let's say we try to process this data in the foreground for emojis, it might uh, make sense because it doesn't take a lot of uh, power or resources to do it. But let's say you want to do thumbnailing, right? So like, for example, we have seen in the gallery application, right? 
when people load the app, we want to be able to see a smaller size of these pictures instead of bigger pictures that the person originally uploaded. So in a way, our thumbnailing shouldn't be done on the client side because it will take a lot of resources to achieve it. And it should not block the user from performing other actions as well. So this is a great way to get things done on the uh, background as well. So cloud function is one way to do it. So if you're wondering, uh, besides uh, writing your own functions, you can actually use predefined functions that is available for you. So uh, we have something called Firebase extensions We help you easily get uh, functions up and running. So let's take a look at some example. Firebase extension. So if you have some sort of extension uh, that you want to use or you want to develop, there are some extensions that is already done for you that you can easily use. So let's take a look at some of them. For example, I want to be able to resize my images. Every time a user uploads an images as thumbnailing, you can actually just click on install and you have that feature available in your app. If I want to send an email based on a Firestore collection, so every time I add a new record in the Firestore, I want to send an email that can be easily done by just clicking on the install button. And if I want to delete users' data who doesn't want to uh, use your app anymore, you can actually install this as well. If you want to do e-commerce apps and you are using Stripe, Firebase has a new uh, extension just released to help you create invoices to send to your customers so that they can pay on Stripe itself. So these are some ways you can actually do it. Uh, use cloud functions to help you achieve it. Of course, these are just some pre-packaged solutions. You can always develop your own using JavaScript. So yeah, I guess uh, let's take a look also at cloud hosting, right? So let's say you have finished building your web app, right? Now you want to share your creation to the world. You want everyone to be able to access the, the application, like what I've shared with you with all the links I shared. Those can be easily be hosted using a Firebase hosting. So all you need to upload is your static uh, files, your static HTML files over to Firebase hosting. And of course, you can connect on a custom domain as well. So everything is secure and it provides you with HTTPS connection. So let's say for even our gallery demo, it runs on HTTPS. So if you have some sort of API running in the app that collects some sort of sensitive data that you don't want to be exposed on the wire, uh, on the connection itself, uh, through a middleman attack, you can of course rely on Firebase uh, hosting to provide you with an SSL for free by default. And the SSL is renewed automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about that. So you can actually easily use Firebase hosting to do it for you. So if you're interested in learning more about what you can do with Firebase, you can take a look at the resources for you to get started. So you can take a look at the uh, documents here. And if you want to look at what other functions you can do using Cloud Functions, you can take took a look here. If you really want to get started and trying to create your own web chat, you can actually uh, click here. So the links are shared in the chat below. The chat below here. Yeah. So if you're wondering uh, how all the demos that I shown you earlier on, where we show your the game where we did the fire fire water stuff, you can of course always check out the stat blitz link so that you can fork out a copy. Your emoji chat as well, and the gallery demo all available for you. So let's take a look maybe at one of them right. So just click on the link if you're interested in learning uh, how to actually how this was actually developed. So this runs on React because that's the fastest way I could get it out and running. And of course, uh, this is just some of the code configuration. Let me just show you. So. If you want to create your own Firebase project or if I start using Firebase immediately, all you need to do is just go to your Firebase here and just create an app project. Just fill in your project name and you're pretty much done. And if you want to create, use Firebase for the web, you can of course always add it from the button here. You can click add app here and you can choose web. 
and add fibers to the web. So I've already added one app, which is here. And all of this configuration do you see here, all of this information here are uh, public information. So nothing is leaked out here. Uh, so basically what this does is identifies your Firebase project on the, on the web. So you just have to make sure you include all this stuff and then you initialize Firebase. So all of this stuff, you can actually find it on the Firebase documentation as well. Yeah. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it on chat and I'll be able to answer them. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Lim. Uh, yeah, if anyone has question, do put on chat. Um, we will, um, basically, we will answer the questions. <laughs> Not to, Mr. Lim will answer the questions. Just put it on chat. Anyone has questions? Any questions? If no, I don't think there is any questions, but uh, we can wait uh, like another minute to see. I will be sharing the slides later on with Alia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you need to, you can actually take a look at that. Okay, uh, there is a question actually. Um, by Asraf, uh, can Firebase be integrated with any apps? So um, in the slides, I have mentioned some of the few ways you can uh, integrate it. The main few ways to integrate would be to use Android, iOS, native development. If you use uh, Ionic, uh, if you use uh, React Native, if you use Flutter, all of those are supported through third-party SDKs. Uh, web also supported. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by any apps, but most apps should be able to support uh, most uh, Firebase features. Uh, there are some features exclusive for mobile as well. So, for example, uh, we have uh, Test Lab and um, Analytics. Some uh, areas of the Firebase product is limited to other platforms, but the majority of mobile and web platforms should be able to support Firebase. Uh, the S, if you are if you're using a client side app, for example, a PHP client-sided app or server-side rendered app, you can always use the Firebase admin SDK to help you achieve what you need to do. So if you have your own backend and you want to read data from Firebase, you can use the admin SDK to help you get data from that. But of course, uh, the real-time features of the real Firebase uh, Firestore and real-time database has to be on a client-sided, using the client-sided SDK. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Astro, Mr. Lin. Uh, we have another question by Mr. Arif. Is there any difference between Firestone and real time? Which is better? Yes, that's a great question. So I've I received a lot of uh, questions, especially on this topic where people uh, don't really know when to use either. So uh, let me just explain briefly what real time and Firestore uh, actually is for. So real-time is actually meant for really high velocity, high response rate, high refresh rate apps that you want to build. For example, if you want to build a collaborative whiteboard, a collaborative uh, game, like we have shown this now in the Firewater demo, you use real-time database. Reason being is that the refresh rate for each, uh, refresh rate for each uh, update in real-time database is much faster compared to Firestore. So Firestore actually runs at one document update per second, which is fairly slower than real time. So if you want to build apps that is highly collaborative in nature, you can use real time. 
But there are some drawbacks in real time as well. For example, how you organize and filter data can be a problem. So as you have seen just now, the Firebase real time data structure is a large JSON tree. So you will need to traverse through the tree in order to try to filter data or uh, try to organize data in a way. So if you're building uh, e-commerce apps or you're building apps that has data in a very organized fashion, my first recommendation is to always use Firestore instead of real time. So uh, because data is easily organized, easily filtered, easily, uh, you can easily get data that way from the Firestore. So my number one recommendation is to always start with Firestore first until you feel that it may not be sufficient to feel, fulfill your needs. And of course, you're going to build a high refresh rate, a high response rate app, you would, uh, I would recommend uh, real time. Also, you can actually use both real time and Firestore at the same time. So you can use Firestore to handle all the organized data that you want, all the filtering, and you can use real time at the same time to handle real time collaborative functions in your app. Yep. All right, thank you. Hopefully that answer your questions. So we have another one. Um, by Logadarshini, um, can we able to connect Arduino to Firebase Cloud to display data in web application? Yes, so uh, in Arduino, there is actually a C++ library to connect to the real-time database. I'm not sure if there are any for Firestore, but you can actually use uh, the C++ library to actually send data over to Firebase as well. And of course, since you can send data to Firebase from Arduino, you can of course get the data back on the web. So that's a definite yes. You can actually just search around uh, on Google. You just type uh, Fire, a real-time database, C++. There should be a library provided by Firebase for you to actually do that. Yep. Thank you. Um, we have no questions, but if anyone want to ask to send us the questions, are there any more questions? Okay, I don't think there are any more. So, um, yeah, okay, so uh, we'll end the session. Um, so thank you everyone for uh, joining us and thank you, Mr. Lim, for giving us the talk. It was really insightful and it's really interesting. I myself don't know much about Firebase, so now I learn a lot. <laughs> So I hope everyone does uh, learn a lot too. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. Um, and thank you again to Mr. Lim. Um, so hopefully everyone has a good day. And we also have, actually we have another talk on Firebase as well, tutorial, later on at three, do join us on that. So uh, yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Lim. Yeah, thank you Aya for having me. So if you have any questions for me, you can find me at Twitter. So my Twitter handle is at Shangi Lim. Mm -hmm. Let me just type it in. Yeah, if there are any questions uh, there, you can feel free to just message me there. Yeah, thank you all. See you, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye.